So the Bluetooth headphone market is dominated by Bose and Sony, but Sennheiser has entered into the 150 US dollars price range with their 4.40 BT wireless headphone, and the result is actually good, but not without its issues. Hey guys, I am Siddharth, and this is Sennheiser 4.40 BT review. Sennheiser is known for their well thought out design and material choices, and at least the material choice part is true for this headphone. Even though the headband isn't very wide, the combination of plastic and silicon is executed in a way that makes it feel reassuringly strong. The part of headband that extends out for size adjustment also feels strong, even though it may look like a thin piece of plastic. The hinges for both vertical and horizontal rotation also feel strong, and there is no squeaking noises at all. The two-step folding mechanism is also great and allows for any one of the ear cup to be on top, so you don't have to worry about which one will go first. The ear cups are thick and have memory foam inside, and while they are very soft, comfort is a complicated matter with these headphones, which we will talk about later in this video. I really like the design of this headphone. It looks very modern, and the branding and the color choice is very tasteful. It has a very sleek and minimalistic look. There is a subdued Sennheiser word mark on the headband. And the logo on both sides on the ear cup hinges. Inside the box, you will find a carrying pouch which offers minimal protection. Then you'll find the operation manual which you should read. Then the wired cable for these headphones, a micro USB cable for charging, and finally the headphones folded inside. The headphone is light at 225 grams, but because the headband isn't wide, you do feel the weight on a small area of your head, which isn't comfortable. The ear pads are made of very good materials. They are thick and have memory foam inside, so they are very soft too. But the biggest problem with these headphones is that the ear pads have very small openings. Even though I read in online reviews that this would be a problem, I thought that they were exaggerating it. I have slightly bigger than average ears at 7.5 cm while the world average is 6.5 cm. So I think that people with small to average ears won't find this uncomfortable, but for people with bigger ears I think this can be a big problem. The clamping force isn't very high, but because the ear pads are uncomfortable, it starts getting painful after some time for me. You can find the right position with some fiddling and then it can be comfortable enough to wear for an hour. But saying that your mileage may vary will be an understatement and you will have to try them on to know for sure. I thought that the M50X were uncomfortable, but these are even more uncomfortable and they also get hot very quickly, so if you sweat a lot this could be a big problem. One fix that makes a big difference is removing the ear pads and then fit them on again upside down. The problem with these ear pads is that these have these four stitching lines at bottom of the ear pad and it becomes very uncomfortable when these sharp and hard stitching lines press against your ear lobes. So when you turn these upside down, this part goes to the upper part of the ear pads and they become much more comfortable and the stitching lines don't hurt the upper part of the ear. You can also add more padding to the headband which in addition to making it more comfortable on your head also reduces the clamping force. These were still not comfortable enough for me to wear for an hour. So to fix this, I bought the Brainwaves HM5 Velour ear pads, which are much larger than these, and even though they didn't work well with my M50X, I thought that because these have the drivers at a distance from the ears, like the HM5 headphones, they should work better with these. The opening for the ear pads on this headphone is very narrow, so fitting the HM5 pads was very difficult. But the sound changed too much with these, below an acceptable level. The bass almost became absent and the highs became sibilant and harsh. So these very popular ear pads won't work with these, simply because there is a big difference between the size of the ear cups. So the comfort is really a mixed bag with these. If these fit you well, you'll find them to be comfortable for hours, but if they don't, then even half an hour could be difficult, and you may have to spend some time in getting these positioned right. If you can find an ear pad replacement that is comfortable and doesn't destroy the sound quality, all these problems can be fixed. This is a Bluetooth headphone with Aptex, so it should have higher quality output than the non-Aptex headphones with compatible devices. Range is great and I can move around in my flat without dropping the connection. All the controls and ports are on the right ear cup, where you will see a status LED followed by the power button, the multifunction slider button, the volume adjustment buttons, then you'll see a 2.5mm input jack for wired connection and then finally a micro USB port for charging. The controls are unfortunately not easy to operate because they are small and feel almost the same. I really dislike how the multifunction slider button works 
especially because the basic functionality of play and pause is achieved by pressing the multifunction button inside. Now the problem with that is that it's actually not a button but it feels like the triggers on an Xbox controller. Meaning that it doesn't click when you press it but goes inside with resistance but without any feedback. And because it's a slider, it can slide if you press it at the wrong angle which makes this inconvenient to use. And you will have to press or press and hold this button for 2 seconds to play and pause, to attend and reject calls, to put them on hold and to voice dial or use the voice assistant. So the fact that the most used button is the most inconvenient to use here is a big letdown. And I really wish that they didn't have to use this slider mechanism for so many important functions. It will also take a few days to get familiar with the positioning, the difference between the feel of buttons and how to press them correctly. It actually isn't as bad as it may sound with all the details, but it's definitely not a very good implementation. The power and volume buttons are thankfully easier to use and have some feedback. With the 2.5mm jack, you can use this like a wired headphone with a satellite cable. Even though Bluetooth doesn't work while the cable is connected, I think that it's a good thing because it skips the electronics inside and if they stop working correctly, you should be able to use this as a wired headphone. The sound quality in wired mode with a dedicated DAC and amp only gets slight improvement which means that Seneza has put good quality components inside and there is very little compromise on the sound in wireless mode. It has a battery life of around 25 hours which is really good and it charges quickly in 2 hours so I think that most people will only have to charge it once or twice a week. The ear cups are small but it has to be considered that these headphones are designed to be more portable and isolating than other headphones which you might use at home. So the small ear pad opening coupled with their thickness and tight seal make these headphones very noise isolating and even though they do not have noise cancelling functionality, the isolation they have is good enough to make them usable in a gym or in an airplane. It has two microphones and the quality in calls is really good. One great feature on these is that while in calls you can also hear your own voice while talking which is really great because these headphones are so isolating that they will also block your own voice which might make you speak louder. On the left ear cup there is only the NFC transmitter and the great thing about it is that even if you have the headphones turned off and you bring the phone close to it, it will power on and connect to the phone so that is very convenient. Now coming on to the sound quality, I have to say that these sound better than what I was expecting for a wireless headphone in this price range. When I talk about the sound quality of these headphones, it has to be considered that these are wireless which means that in addition to the drivers, it also has Bluetooth receiver, a DAC, an amp and a battery built into it. So starting with the low frequencies, these definitely have emphasized bass. It's not overpowering and it does not bleed into the mid-range, but it definitely sounds like leaning towards the bassy side of the spectrum. You can hear the sub bass clearly in tracks which have sub bass, which is generally not very prominent in more neutral headphones, and it can actually be enjoyable in bass centric music. It makes these headphones really great for electronic music. The bass is adequately fast, so it's not exceptionally tight or loose, and it's actually better than what I was expecting. Now I don't know what bass heads like, but as far as bass heavy headphones go, this is as far as they should go. And any more bass than this would only have made them worse. Now coming on to the mids, they are not great but they are good and they will not keep you from enjoying your music. One problem with the mids is that they have a bump in the 1kHz point in the frequency range which means that audio in this part is going to sound louder than other parts of the audio. Now this part has the upper range of voices so a bump here makes the vocals sound a little artificial in the music. This is not a big problem but once you notice it, you'll definitely keep noticing it. In movies, it is actually good as it makes the dialogues more audible and in electronic music that has subdued vocals, these headphones can bring them out which can actually be enjoyable. But in all other types of music, the vocals are going to sound a little artificial and radio-like. Thankfully, it is very easy to fix with an equalizer and once you turn down the 1kHz slider by around 3 decibels, voices and vocals will sound very natural and this issue is completely fixed. Now the high frequency range of these headphones is what I found to be a little disappointing. Sennheiser is known for rolling off the highs a little and I generally like the Sennheiser sound signature. But on these headphones, the highs lack the presence and sparkle. So if you enjoy the liveliness that good highs provide on a more balanced headphone, you are going to miss it here. This also means that classical music is not going to be very enjoyable on these headphones. The highs can be improved by turning the equalizer slider at 14 and 16 kilohertz by around 2 or 3 decibels. It helps with the lack of presence in the highs and makes these headphones sound more balanced. Now all of that might sound bad but it's not that bad considering that this is a wireless headphone and it is a little unfair to compare it with the wired headphones in the same price range. But all of this is just to give you an idea of how they are going to sound. Now the sound stage of these headphones is good for a close back headphone but it has some odd characteristics because of the uneven frequency response. The audio in low and mid frequencies has good separation 
But because of the lack of presence in the highs, the instrument separation in mid to high frequencies is not great. So for example, in Hotel California, the vocals and bass guitar have good imaging, but the high notes on the rhythm guitar and the high hats on the drums don't have good separation. And they feel like they are condensed into a small area. Using the equalizer makes the sound stage better by some extent. So in conclusion, I think that these headphones are a good entry by Sennheiser in this price range. They sound great and relatively balanced for a Bluetooth headphone. And as long as you don't have large ears, you are going to find them comfortable enough. For people with larger ears like me, I have mixed feelings for them. Comfort is a very important factor when it comes to headphones. So in case they don't fit you well, you will have to find an earbud replacement which has a similar design. There are other options like Sony XB950 BT available, but I don't like bass heavy headphones. And I read too many reports of them breaking in less than a year. So I don't think that they would have been a better choice for me. So in spite of all the issues that this headphone has, I would still go for it in this price range for a Bluetooth wireless headphone. So I hope that was helpful if you are planning to buy this. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you like the content. You can also buy this headphone through the links in the description. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.